All right, continuing on with our Wheel Within a Wheel Bible study, this is part two. Now, I was going to start in Genesis right there at the very beginning with Adam and Eve, but then I got to reading about Jehu, and I like Jehu, so we're going to do Jehu first. So open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 9. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Gird up thy loins and take this box of oil in thy hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and tarry not. Now there's details upon details to be studied forever right here. But I'm just going to focus on the really main obvious things. And I encourage you to dig deeper into every part of this study. In this example, Jehu is a picture of Jesus. Make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. This is the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. Then take the box of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord. This is Jesus being anointed ahead of time in heaven for his thousand year reign on earth. Let's turn over to Zechariah chapter 3 for just a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. The filthy garments were taken and he was given new raiment. Because Jesus ascended bodily into heaven, physically, and there received his glorified body. And here we see him getting his charge for his thousand year reign. Now here we see Jehu anointed. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. And now we'll turn to Revelation chapter 18 to see that Jezebel here represents the whore of Babylon, Jerusalem. Verse 24, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Who? Revelation 17 verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Back to 2 Kings verse 12. Here we see the church being born. Then they hasted and took every man his garment and put it under him on the top of the stairs and blew with trumpets, saying, Jehu is king. Is it peace? What hast thou to do with peace? When Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Matthew 10.34 Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. 2 Kings 9.26 Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, saith the Lord, and I will requite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground according to the word of the Lord. This is Jesus crucified. This is the church martyred. Mark 13, 12, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father, the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Luke 21, 18, But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. Revelation 13, verse 7, There's the patience of the saints. Revelation 14, verse 9. There's the patience of the saints. Back to 2 Kings 9, 26. Cast him into the plat of ground. This is Satan being cast into the pit. You can see that in Revelation 20, verses 1 and 2. Matthew 22, 13 in the parable of the wedding supper. If you back up from Revelation 20 up into Revelation 19, here's the marriage supper of the Lamb. 2 Kings 9.27, here is a picture of Armageddon. And now we will deal with Jerusalem, the whore of Babylon. And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trod her underfoot. The eunuchs threw her down. A very clear picture of that can be seen in Joel chapter 2. And it gets pretty intense. Followed in chapter 3 by Armageddon. In Isaiah 56 verse 3, 
Neither let the eunuchs say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now separate from the eunuchs, but still seen together, also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Back up to verse 3, here is the church, here are the eunuchs. Verse 8, here is the marriage. Verse 9, the marriage supper. Isaiah 57 verse 1, we see how one is found worthy to escape all these things. He shall enter into peace, they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Matthew 19.12, For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Now why do I keep going on and on about eunuchs? Well, let's find out who these eunuchs are. This army from Joel chapter 2 that runs through Jerusalem and wipes it clean for the coming of the king. Ezekiel chapter 9. Every man had a slaughter weapon in his hand, and one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Everyone. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Notice these angels are holding the four winds. Mark thirteen twenty seven. He shall gather together his elect from the four winds. And just like in Isaiah 56, we have the 144,000 eunuchs right next to the church that has just been martyred. They have received their white robes. They came out of great tribulation. This is the church. In Revelation 14, we see the 144,000 sealed elect. They sang a new song that only they could learn. Verse 4, we see that they are eunuchs. Verse 8, we see the whore of Babylon thrown down. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Revelation 17, 4, 5, and 6 again. Verse 14, here is the martyrdom of the church once more. Chosen and faithful for true and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand second kings 10 this whole story picture starts over again second kings chapter 10 verse 20 jehu proclaims a solid assembly for baal come get ye down to the valley of jehoshaphat Verse 23, Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. There is a very good reason why the Antichrist is allowed to kill the church. Fear not them that can kill the body and afterwards do no more. Not a head of your hair shall perish. Why is the church allowed to be killed by the Antichrist? Because the church is not appointed to God's wrath, which falls after the church is martyred. Because those seven angels that blow those seven trumpets previously had another job, and you can see their job clearly detailed in the seven letters to the seven angels of the seven churches in Revelation chapters 1 through 3. Back to 2 Kings. Now we see this whole scene again in chapter 11 with Athaliah. The details are different. The result is the same because it's the same story told again. Now I'm doing the best I can to keep these short and watchable, but also the information I'll be there in one complete package. If you have any recommendations for how I could do that better than I've done it here on this video, please do not hesitate to let me know. And if you have a request for which Bible story I do next, leave that in the comments also. I can do every story in the Bible this way. Because the Bible, as well as history and reality itself, is a wheel within a wheel. And every story in the Bible tells the story of the second coming of Jesus Christ.